Good morning and welcome to the Kilik Co Market Update. One of the biggest pieces of news this week is that the Emergy Property Portfolio, which is one of the largest commercial property funds in the UK, has been forced to prevent investors from withdrawing money from the fund. Lots of investors have been trying to withdraw their money over the last few months because of concerns about the impact of Brexit on commercial property prices. Essentially, the fund has now run out of cash, and in order to satisfy further withdrawals, it would have to sell off some property. The fund is heavily exposed to retail property, and this is not exactly an area with lots of buyers at the moment, so it's unclear how long it will take the fund to sell more property, and therefore it's unclear exactly how long this fund will be suspended for. This fund has actually been suspended for before, back in 2016. Again, following the referendum, investors were concerned about the impact of this on property prices. Lots of investors tried to withdraw their money and the fund was forced to suspend. Back in 2016, this did have a bit of a domino effect on other property funds within the UK. The news of this particular fund being suspended caused investors into other commercial property funds to be concerned that their funds too might be suspended. Lots of investors started trying to take money out of all the different commercial property funds and lots of them were forced to suspend from withdrawals. So there is perhaps a little bit of concern that something like that could happen again. Here's a chart showing the share price of this M&G property portfolio over the last seven years. You can see that the portfolio has performed well during this time, but you can see there was a clear dip in the value in 2016, just before the portfolio was for forced to suspend withdrawals for investors. And again, you can see that over the last couple of months, there has been a decline in the value as investors have been trying to take money out of the fund. And I think the fact this fund has been forced to suspend will again raise the question of whether or not an open-end fund structure such as this is appropriate for illiquid assets such as property. As we saw with Neil Woodford's equity income fund, if an open-ended fund contains assets that are difficult to sell, if too many investors try and take their money from the fund, the fund manager has no choice but to prevent investors from taking out their money. On the other hand, if you have a closed-ended structure like an investment trust or a real estate investment trust, investors who want their money back can only sell their investment to another investor. They cannot take their money out of the fund and force the fund manager to sell the underlying holdings. So some might argue that a closed-ended fund structure is more appropriate for illiquid assets like property. So I think that's perhaps a discussion that will be in the news over the next couple of weeks as a result of this situation with the M&G property portfolio. And also this week, we've had the quarterly FTSE 100 reshuffle. In this quarter, we've had two companies joining the FTSE and two companies coming out of the FTSE. Here are the four companies here. So the two companies coming in are EasyJet and Just Eat. So EasyJet's had a fairly good quarter. They actually did quite well in the aftermath of the Thomas Cook collapse because EasyJet was able to pick up a number of new takeoff and landing slots at different UK airports. So I think that's been good news for EasyJet. That's why the share price has come up in the last quarter and that's why they've been able to rejoin the FTSE 100 index. The other company joining the FTSE is Just Eat. They've actually been the subject of two takeover bids over the last quarter and that's why the share price there has risen. The two companies coming out, one of them is Hiscox and this is a casualty insurer with a global remit and they've actually suffered from something called social inflation over the last couple of years. And this relates to payouts um, awarded by juries in the US. And over the last couple of years, we've seen the value of these payouts rising quite dramatically. And that's had a real negative impact on the insurance companies that are having to pay for these claims. So this is a phenomenon we've seen in the US over the last couple of years. It's been really bad news for Hiscox. That's why the share price has come down. And that's why the company is now falling out of the FTSE 100. The other company coming out is Fresnillo, a gold mining company. They've had a few issues with a couple of their mines over the last year, and they've also suffered from a decline in the gold price over the last quarter. That's caused the profits of the company come, to come down. That's why the share price has come down. And again, that's why the company has now come out of the FTSE 100. So those are the four results of this quarter's FTSE 100 quarterly reshuffle.
And finally this week, Saudi Aramco is expected to join the stock exchange next week in what is expected to be the largest ever IPO in the world. The company is expecting to raise $25.6 billion, and that's just ahead of the $25 billion that was raised by Alibaba when they previously took the record for the world's largest IPO. Now, despite raising this much money, this is actually the result of Saudi Aramco scaling back the proposition of their IPO. They initially wanted to raise more money, and they initially wanted to list on one of the more international stock exchanges. As it is, they've scaled back the IPO, and they'll just be listing 1.5% of the value of the entire company, even though that's still worth $25.6 billion. And they'll also just initially be listing on the Riyadh Stock Exchange. So these shares are joining the market next week, and we'll be watching closely to see how that IPO progresses and how the shares perform in their first couple of weeks of trading. Now, looking ahead to next week, we have got results coming out from Ashdead, but mainly next week we'll be looking at the result of the general election. And um, hopefully next week when we have this market update, we will have the result of that. So have a great weekend and we'll see you next Friday.